Ladies and gentlemen, Ari Safir. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right, this is the crowd, I can already tell. Fuck <laughs> yeah. I love it here. All right, relax, I'm not that good. Uh, if you're wondering if I look Jewier than normal, uh, that is not your imagination. I grew a beard. Before I had the beard, uh, all my friends were like, you look the Jewiest possible. And, you can't, and then I grew the beard, they were like, oh, we were wrong. You split the atom, I have no idea how you did it. It's fun being in Denver. I like how you guys have, uh, have like four black people in the entire state. Uh, I've seen like three black dudes the entire time I've been here. It's fucking weird, what do you do with them all? Here's the one moment, by the way, that every white guy goes through where they're afraid of being called a racist. It's on an elevator. It's when your wallet is in your back pocket and your hand's at your side. If you're alone and one black guy walks in the elevator, if your arm moves from there to like there. Just one inch, that's all it takes. Just one inch, you're like, fuck. Ooh, that seemed racist. God damn it, hand. Why'd you do that? What are you doing? I never know if I should reach like all the way around, but I think I'm picking out a wedgie or something. Like racist, no, I just don't wipe. That's all that's happening here. Please. You can't win sometimes. So here's what I'm gonna do from now on. Whenever a black guy walks in the elevator, I just wanna pull my wallet out and just start going, no, no, please. No! Here's my thought process. If I'm gonna get called a racist anyway, I wanna fucking earn it. Let's make this shit count. Plus, he'll have a way better story for his friends later. He'll be like, I saw the most racist thing ever today on an elevator. I'm like, oh what, let me guess, some white guy touched his wallet? They're like, no, no, so much worse than that. He pulled his wallet out, got into some sort of rape crouch, and started pushing the buttons and screaming in Hebrew. Like, that's a far superior story. This is a rape crouch, by the way. I don't know if you knew what this was. I used to watch a lot of Lifetime television. <laughs> and whenever you turn the TV on, and someone's already in the shower like this. <laughs> like huddled up and looking to the sky. Yeah, you just missed the best scene in the movie. <laughs> it's so weird how the weather changes here like nonstop in Denver. It was like 85 degrees on Thursday. And then the next day it was like 50. I went on Thursday, I went down to 16th Street, uh, which should be renamed just the homeless place. <laughs> because that's your like touristy walking area. You just shove all the fucking homeless people in there. So we all just leave thinking like, people from Colorado are dirty. Here's, here's how I feel about the homeless issue. I'm probably like a lot of you, I'm split. Like half of me thinks like, oh, those are human beings and they're suffering and humans shouldn't suffer like that. And then the other half of me thinks, ew. <laughs> and that's a real part of you too. You gotta allow for that. That's real emotions and thoughts. Like if I'm a homeless guy, you guys sitting at a sidewalk cafe right there, and I was like, how are you guys doing today? And I see a piece of spit go up in the air. If you lose track of that spittle, you're like, well, we're done with this pizza. I'm not catching homeless on a Wednesday. Let's just go somewhere else. We feel weird, and it's not just us. I think that's nature, and this is why. Have you ever seen a dog around a homeless guy? They go ape shit. It's hilarious. Sweetest, quietest little dog. They'll cuddle up with a baby. They see a homeless guy, they're just like. Rrr, 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 rrr. What the fuck? What the fuck is that thing? What the fuck is that thing right there? It smells weird. What is that thing? Nobody trains them how to do that, by the way. 
They just come like that, factory ready. <laughs> and you might be like, so what do dogs know? They're not that smart. Well, what else do they bark at? <laughs> Fucking earthquakes before they happen, okay? <laughs> dogs are smart as shit. And they hate the homeless and so do we, all right? And that's fine. They make it weird. You ever get out of a 7-Eleven out of your car in a 7-Eleven and they all start like walking towards you? It's like the walking dead all of a sudden. We're like, they're not fast, but they're persistent. So you gotta like weave through them. Like, ew, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me, ew. And then like, uh. They're tough to avoid, man. I've come with a way to, to, to get it done. Here's what if you want to get it. You can steal this if you want. Whenever a homeless guy comes up to you, you just pull your cell phone out and act like you're talking on it. And for some reason they go, oh, I'm oh, so sorry. And they just go away. I don't know what it is, but it works. I think it reminds them of their youth or something. But I went into the 7-Eleven and uh, I was at the counter and I was looking through the, the stained glass window. From the, not the stained glass window, whatever, just the glass window. <laughs> Be great if 7-Eleven started using stained glass windows. <laughs> Just like shitty taquitos rolling and like stained glass and like angelic flies going overhead and recently expired milk. But I was looking through the window at this homeless guy and I noticed he, was, he, had, a, he had a beard like just like mine. And I was looking at him, I was like, weird how we had the same kind of beard. And then I looked closer and I realized he was wearing a members only jacket. It was like a brand new red members only jacket. The kind I've been looking for for like six goddamn years. And this guy's got one on and it's spotless. It's like brand new. And I'm staring at him, just thinking, where the fuck does a homeless guy get such a sweet jacket? And as I'm looking at him, he just looks up and locks eyes with me through the window. And I'm like, this is gonna be weird. And he stares at me for like four or five seconds and then he just goes, Bleh, and just barfs all over himself. Just unloaded. Didn't even lean forward before he barfed, by the way. He just stayed right there. Like, thinking about the weather. Like, oh, today's 75 degrees. I wonder if blah, tomorrow's getting any warm. Dude, I need you to react to what just happened, okay? That's important for me as a human. Who doesn't lean forward before you barf? When you're five, you learn how to do that. When you're five. At five years old, you barf all over yourself and you have this first moment of self-realization. And you're like, this is disgusting what I've done. I'm gross, I'm, I'm gross, that's what I am. And then your mom walks by and immediately you notice she has no barf on her. So you're like, um, hey lady, how you living? And she'll teach you about gravity and how it makes things go straight down every single time. It never doesn't work that way. So if it just little take up it, short and stout, and just fucking bend over, your barf will all get on the floor and it won't get on your chest. And at five, at five years old, you're like, awesome, thank you, lady. I will never forget that information. Or at least I won't until I turn homeless and some Jew is staring at me through a window and I'll barf at him, at him in some sort of weird voodoo ritual to fuck with his day. <laughs> it was so fucking gross. He didn't wipe it off too. You would think he'd wipe it off. He left, this is what he did to wipe it off. He took his fingers, his four fingers, opened them wide, tucked his stuff, opened them wide and just went bloop one time. Just one swipe across the chest. In case you're wondering, that did not get the barf off his chest. If your next question was like, Ari, did that work in getting the barf off his chest? No, it did not. All it did was it made stripes. It made red and barf colored stripes all the way down his shirt. He looked like Waldo. If everyone had just stopped looking for Waldo. <laughs> he left him there. So I left, and as I left, he started coming towards me. So I get my phone, I'm like, oh, we're not gonna do this, right? And I pretend like I'm talking. But then he gets in my way, he goes, can I make a phone call when you're done? <laughs> like, you're not prepared for a question like that, ever. And I wanted to say, my brain wanted to just say like, well played, sir. 
because, I mean, I didn't expect that. But you can't say anything, so here's what I came up with on the fly, because I'm an improviser and an order. This is what I do for a living, so here's what I thought of like that. He asked about my cell phone, and I said, uh, 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 those are my exact words, I remember it. And I think he could see that I was hesitant, so, uh, this is what he actually said to put me at ease. He goes, well, don't worry, man. It's not long distance or anything. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, homeless guy. You nailed it. You nailed it. I would have worried about the long distance charges on my cell phone. How long have you been homeless? It's time to work on your resume, bro. <laughs> Too long. Anyway, even if it was, that's not why I'm not gonna give it to you. It's you're gonna fucking steal it. Or worse, you're gonna use it. With your disgusting homeless hand. And bring my phone, my phone, your disgusting homeless face. So you can talk to who? Who are you gonna call? Whose number do you still know? None of your friends are in my contacts. I guarantee that. And then you finish your call and try to give it back to me. At that point, fucking keep it, dude. I don't want that shit back. I'll just lie. I'll just say Mexicans robbed me. <laughs> or something more believable. I loaned my phone to a homeless guy and he got homeless juice all over it. <laughs> Do you really think Apple's gonna cover that? No, they don't cover even dropping the toilet. There's no way they cover homeless juice of a human toilet. I one time I saw a uh, this is the worst thing I've ever seen I once saw a pregnant homeless lady okay hold on stop <laughs> so the air go out of the room the 30 or so of you who just went like oh that was actually the right reaction to have the rest of you are jaded motherfuckers and you need to go to church okay and I'm Jewish I don't offer that advice very much but trust me, you need Jesus in your lives, immediately. You're not supposed to be cool with that, okay? You're not supposed to be casual about homeless ladies getting pregnant. There are women taking fertility drugs and timing out their period of the month. This lady, her diet was Doritos and failure. And she gets knocked up? When did God die? <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. She was like eight months pregnant too. She was gonna have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if she had it, I'm assuming she was probably gonna fucking eat it. <laughs> Maybe, right? Maybe. Maybe. I could see her probably eating it. It'd be for a mixture of nutrients and street cred. That's, by the way, that's the most street cred you could ever get in your life. There's no one you could beat up, no one you could kill that would instill fear in people more than that. You could be the biggest fucking gangster on your block. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna walk on your side of the street. Cause see that lady? She ate her own baby. And that's what I call a wild card. I think what would happen is, I think she would have it and then she would let it dangle there for a while by the umbilical cord. I'm on your side. None of us think they should get pregnant. We're all on the same side here. Because nobody wants to be pulled up at a red light and just sort of look over and just see a dangling baby in what looks like his first day of gym class. Just let him crawl his way back into the womb of safety. He came out and realized, oh fuck, are my mom's homeless? No. Let's see if we can reset this game. While she's busy finishing off her half a Snickers she found in the garbage can. Cause it's been a good Tuesday. And then when she gets good and hungry, she's like, oh yeah, I still got that baby snack coming. But she's too lazy and homeless to bend over and just pick it up. So instead, she'll just try to like... 
like work up a momentum and try to catch it on the upswing. Like, remember those ball in the cup games? Remember those where you had to like catch a ball in the string in a little cup? That's what she'd do. And then munch baby. <laughs> you guys are a cool crowd. <laughs> you really are. Because that bit, sometimes it goes south. And when it goes south, it goes south. There's anger and hatred. And your guys are all like, whatever, fuck it. It's the best bit to do up front, because everybody annoying is, gonna, is just going to leave. <laughs> like, oh, this, is, this has nothing to do for me. And just like, fucking just go. You guys are cool. The coolest crowd I ever did, the crowd was actually fine. I shouldn't say that. The coolest audience members I ever had. It was in Portland, Oregon. It was a good crowd, but there's four people, like where you were with the glasses, like right there. There's four dudes, and they were all on mushrooms the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it was really rad. My friends were like, you should have fucked with them a little bit. You should have messed with them. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Let me just go like this the whole time. <laughs> Sound like I'm a snake. I'm not gonna do that, all right? Not to mention, they don't need help being fucked with. They're on mushrooms. Just let it happen. Don't be that guy. Uh, have you guys ever done shrooms before? All right, cool. A few of you have. The rest of you are wasting your lives. I don't know what you're waiting for. Maybe you don't want to talk to God. All right. That's cool. But for those of you who've done them, you know you're still present and aware of what's happening around you while you're on them. So three out of the four of them were having a great trip. And they would laugh like extra hard at all the jokes. But for whatever reason, the sound of their laughter would just fill the other guy with fear. Just pure fear. So like every joke, he would just say, like, ha, 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 ha. No! Get away! And then they would all forget what just happened and go back to politely waiting for the next joke. It was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. The most beautiful thing, I'll try to, this was actually way too dirty early on, but fuck it, I guess, who cares? You guys all seem cool. Uh, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I want, are you guys familiar with the term um, money shot? Okay, if you're not familiar, I've tried to think of a clean way to say it, and this is the cleanest I can come up with. It's a sexual term. But a money shot, it's when a gentleman caller uh, will express his love all over your face. Which... Which, yeah, I am actually not a fan of that. Because I'm always like, you just let me have sex with you. I don't want to do that to your face. That seems rude. <laughs> if you did not let me have sex with you, then I could see it. <laughs> you know, that seems right. If I was like, hey, how about tonight? She's like, no, nah, I'm tired. I'm like, God damn it. I'm in the bathroom beating off. All angry. I fucking hate her so much. I'm just tired. Who's tired on a Saturday night? It's fucking ridiculous. You know what? Screw this. I'm a man. I just run up. I'm just like, Bleh. That would be an apt time to do it. <laughs> but otherwise, I am not a fan of it. But I did it one time, one time only, okay? It was in college. It was the second girlfriend I ever had. First girl, like we were both virgins, we were in love, you know? She went on the pill, it was awesome. The only problem is, since that's my only experience, I just assumed that from then on, that every girl was just on the pill. Yeah, that's not the case, if, you, if you're still wondering. So the second girl, we did it, and every time we did it, it was at the top bunk of her bunk bed with her roommate, sometimes sleeping in the bottom bunk. We didn't care. You remember college, who cared? So we were doing it the first time, and it came time to, to bleh, or whatever. Um, and so I just did it. I just went, no condom or anything, and I just fucking did it. And she just stops and looks up at me, and she goes, did you just come inside me? And I was like, I don't... I don't think I understand the question. What do you mean? Who was I supposed to come inside? 
is there some sort of closer that comes in in the ninth inning and finishes things off? Because if that's the case, I am down with that. Let's totally do that. I'm super in right now. Some hot Dominican refugee at those high 90s with heat. Let's fucking do it. She goes, no, idiot. I'm not on the pill. Oh. Yeah, that's exactly the noise I made. That's exactly the noise I made. It was like, this is like visceral. Like you can't even stop. I was just like, oh. Shouldn't you have told me that like 30 seconds ago? What do you want me to do now? You want me to go to the kitchen and get you a spoon or something? <laughs> Obviously now I know that's not gonna work. But at the time, I thought it was a viable option. I didn't have a lot of experience. I thought you'd be like, oh no, we fucked up. Hold on, hold on one second. Uh, here's one. Uh, scoop? I think we're good. I think we, I think we got it. We're good. You want ice cream as long as I got this out? So she goes, no idiot, you have to pull out. And I'm like, all right, fucking next time I'll pull out, relax. So she didn't get pregnant. So next time we were doing it, it came time again. I'm not gonna make that mistake. I'm also not gonna wear a condom, by the way. <laughs> At that time, I had no idea. I had sex with a condom once and I just knew it sucked. This is what a condom feels like for all the girls who don't know. This is what a condom feels like. Imagine, because you think it's the same for us, it's not. Imagine on a really cold day in Denver, like here, and you're driving your car. You got gloves on because it's so cold. You're driving your car, you pull over to a meter, and you have to put change in the meter, right? So you reach into your pocket to get some change. But you got these big fucking gloves on. So you reach in there, and you kind of feel, it's like a, like a quarter and a nickel, you can't quite feel which one's which, you know what I mean? It might be a book of matches or your cell phone. So you try reaching harder and faster and you still can't feel a goddamn thing. That's what fucking with the condom is like. So, so So we did it the next time and it came time again. So I'm not gonna make that mistake. So I pulled out. I'm like, yes, I did it. But then I'm like, oh fuck. Like I hadn't thought far ahead in the chess match, you know, I'm just like one move guys. So I'm like, fuck, what do I do now? And then I just turned to the wall. I have no idea why, but I just turned to the wall and I just fucking blasted it. Like all over the wall. I got really into it too, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was like, yeah, take that. <laughs> Fucking wall. I felt so cool, I felt like a porn star. I looked back to her for support, like she'd be into it too, but she was not into it too. <laughs> she, she was looking at me with this weird mixture of like fear and awe and wonderment. It was like she had just seen like a Tyrannosaurus Rex wearing a tutu. She was like, did you just, um, you know, not quite sure of herself. Um, did you just come on the wall? And I was like, what was I supposed to do with it? You told me to pull out. You were very clear. I didn't get any of your Morrissey posters. What's a diff? And she was like, no, idiot. You're supposed to come on me. You're supposed to do it on my belly button. And I'm like, okay, first of all, first of all, why do you keep calling me an idiot? Do you think I don't notice that? You're wrong, I notice every single time. I just had an orgasm, I'm very vulnerable right now. And your words sting and they don't help me learn, okay? Second of all, and no less important, about this coming on you situation, are you lying? Because that is still, to this day, a thing I've never been able to wrap my head around. When someone's like, yeah, get it on me. I've never gotten that ever. I've never even heard of a guy doing the same thing. Where a guy's on top of a girl, like, having sex, and she's like, oh, I'm gonna come. I've never heard of a guy like, oh, quick, fucking, 
Sit on my belly. Sit on my belly, please. Smush your vagina into my belly button. Please, smush it in. Please, I need it. Slap me in the face and call me a whore, please. Please, it makes it feel better. I've never, ever gotten that. Anyway, you might be asking yourself at this point, hey, where's the money shot in this story? Good question. Here's where it is. The next morning, the roommate woke up and she goes, She goes, did you assholes glue my eye shut? Yeah, it had worked its way down overnight. Like one of those wacky wall crawlers, remember those? Used to find at McDonald's Happy Meals, remember those things? The little octopuses? They were all rubbery, you could throw them against a wall, they would just like stick and then go like. And then went off the roommate's face, like nothing but net, like Bird versus Jordan in 82. And that was my first and only money shot. And it was from long distance. You guys are cool, I like you a lot, I really do. You guys are non-judgmental, I can already tell. Some of you are probably too conservative for this, but you're like, ah, fuck it, everybody else is going with it. We'll just go to church tomorrow. I hate when people like, have their weird like, insecurities or like, differences and they expect everyone else to like, live by them. You ever get those people? Like, you ever hang out with like, a brand new, sober alcoholic? <laughs> yeah, they're horrible to hang out with. Don't get me wrong, if you're an Alcoholics Anonymous, you should have been there like four years ago. You're a fuck up and it'll help you. But I don't have a problem, just you. Those first couple weeks, they see you having a beer with dinner and they're like, really, really? You're gonna have a beer with dinner? Do you need it? Don't you think that means you have a problem? And you're like, if my problem is that I'm thirsty, then yes. Otherwise, please remember that you're the alcoholic, not me. I might have a bunch of beers tonight. You know what I'm not gonna do tomorrow? Have a bunch of beers, okay? I'm not a fucking alcoholic. You were blowing dudes for drugs like last Wednesday. You still have cum in your hair. Please don't look down on me. Just accept that everyone's differences, that's all. I had this friend who's like a vegetarian, but like one of those militant vegetarians. Like most vegetarians just don't eat meat, but there's some that like drive by like a supermarket and they roll down the window so they can yell out murderers. Like that kind. And they, they treat you like you're a smoker. They'll like cough around you if you're eating a hamburger or something. They're like, <coughs> <"Ugh." coughs> Trying to make you feel bad. Like, it's barbaric. <coughs> it's barbaric. It's animals. And you're like, shut the fuck. It's not barbaric, all right? I didn't tackle a cow in front of you and bite his neck open. And then reach in and grab his heart and just pull it out and go like, yes! Die! It's a hamburger. You've seen this before. And I was eating once. I was eating this giant turkey leg in front of my friend, this militant vegetarian. And this giant turkey leg, and she got all mad at me. And she was like, you're really going to eat that in front of me? And I'm like, it's not like I'm eating it on the backstroke, touching your face with it. Like, mm, 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 bathe in it, yes. Bathe in the death. Feel death. Otherwise, let me eat my giant turkey leg in peace. It's literally the only reason I came with you to the Renaissance Fair. That's the best reason to go to the fair, man. To get that giant turkey leg and watch the fuck out of some joust. I just hate when people don't allow for anyone else's differences. Like, I had this friend, that same girl, she was, she was sitting on a couch once, and I walked up behind her, and I just said, hey, Margaret, and I touched her on the top of the head. I didn't ruffle her hair or anything. I, just, I was like, hey, how you doing? And I came around, and she didn't like it. So here's how she expressed herself. She goes, 
That was the exact impression. That was exactly what it sounded like. I'll do it in slow motion. It was hand. That's a version of my name. And then just in case I didn't know, one more. And I was like, is something wrong? And she goes, yeah, okay, I don't like that. I have a thing about that. I have a thing about people touching me in the top of the head. It's like my thing. And I'm like, all right, that's cool, that's fine. But you should know, that's your thing. You're crazy. Do something to alert others. Wear a helmet, let us know. We have no way of knowing. It's not like I walked up to you and touched your vagina. And then when you flinch, I'm like, what's your fucking problem, bitch? Oh yeah, Colorado. Nobody likes touching vaginas in Colorado. Like, that would be my fault. This one's your weird thing. And she was like, oh yeah, really? Really? Let me prove it to you. How would you like it if I did this to you? And she put her hands right on the top of my head. And I was like, that's human contact. I would love that. If you keep your hand there, that'll keep me from killing myself for one more day. Everybody loves a hand on the head. You don't love this one with anybody? Cats. If you put your hand up to a cat, they'll be like, oh, is it my birthday? Already? Oh, dude. And they show that head up. They stand on little cat tiptoes and just go like, yes. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted. You're the best, bro. Oh, and they walk away and go, fuck you for a month. And they just... I just wander off. Cats love it. That's why I never understood. Whenever you see like a lion or a tiger attack, nobody ever just picks their hand up. Those are just big cats. Maybe you're gone either way. Just hold your hand up and maybe be like, oh, that's all I wanted. A little head attention. <laughs> if I could get out of there. That's why, by the way, this whole theory of like, don't expect everyone else to live by your rules. That's why I'm for gay marriage. I don't know how you guys feel about it. My feeling, oh, are you? Okay, cool. I don't know how it was. I just saw a graph recently that said two states had gay marriage legal. It was like Vermont and somewhere in the Midwest. Maryland. It's not Maryland. They're coming, getting, so Iowa, is it really Iowa? Iowa? We should all be embarrassed. <laughs> we should all be embarrassed if Iowa beat us to anything. <laughs> Except inbreeding. If they beat us to inbreeding, you're like, I didn't compete, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, all my friends. The weirdest thing is we had it legal in California for like six months, gay marriage. And then the Mormons came in and they were, their official stance was, nah. <laughs> so everyone's like, all right, Mormons, relax. <laughs> so they took it away. But the weird thing was that like, the vote was split like 50-50, it was down the line. But black people for some reason came out like 80% against gay marriage. Which is weird, because all my black friends were like, Obama's running. So they're all finally like, Obama's our president. We're all free. We're all the same. We're all together. But then it's like, no, 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 no. Not you, faggot. Not you. <laughs> we're all free and the same and together. Get your own celebration. <laughs> Just fucking, why are you listening to Mormons anyway? They're the craziest religion in the world. That's a completely made up religion. Not like all of them, I guess, but like more so. <laughs> Everybody knows it, you're crazy. If you get vote, I'm not political at all. I just stay home and get high all day and just say I was voting. But like, uh, you can't vote for that Mormon until he renounces his faith. That's a crazy faith. And if you, if, tell me you're wrong. If you're Mormon, I totally stand by those words. Like you're fucking crazy and then you get out of that fucking cult. This is what Mormons have taught, by the way. This is what they've actually taught. Mormons have taught that Jesus went to America when he was around. They don't really say how he got there. It was a long time ago. Maybe TWA was still around. I don't know. But he came to America with a bunch of Hebrews and left the Hebrews there in America and they became the Native Americans. Hebrews, Jews, me, this, this, this is a Native American. I'm an Indian, they're saying. But then, and I swear to God on all this, they taught this and they don't teach it anymore, but they used to. They taught that Jesus then took another bunch of Hebrews and went to the moon where he started a race of people called the Lunarians where they still live to this day. Or at least they were teaching that until we actually went to the fucking moon. 
And we were like, hey, Mormons, uh, where are all these people you were talking about? Uh, nobody was here to welcome us at all. <laughs> and they were like, oh, well, you have to understand, 200 years ago, when we made this up, we didn't think anybody would actually go to the fucking moon. <laughs> that seemed like one of the safest lies in history. Like, what, are you gonna call me on it? You're gonna take your golden ladder to the fucking block of cheese in the sky? Just fucking technology outdid Mormonism, so just drop it now. That's all I'm trying to teach. Black people should not listen to Mormons. <laughs> he wouldn't let up to it. He goes, no, but there's also this. It's because they're gonna teach it in our schools. They're gonna teach homosexuality in our schools. And I'm like, wait, do you think they're gonna teach the kids how to be gay? Is that what you think? That's not happening. They're not like showing the, the kids in second grade the footage of the men's Brazilian soccer team with their shirts off. And the teacher's gonna hand out like Johnson & Johnson, my first lube, and just watch him fucking stroke it. And he goes, if something comes up, let's go talk to the guidance counselor. We'll make you a homosexual. Just don't. I used to judge people all the time. I used to be like, God, oh, that was gay, he's getting married. But now I, now I just stopped. I don't know if you guys do that. If you ever take stock in your life and realize you're a complete hypocrite, I am all the time. If I see somebody in their car talking on their cell phone or something with it to the ear and they go through a red light or something, I'm always like, you fucking animal! Piece of shit, let it dry, you fucking moron! Oh, went through a red light. just went through the next possible red light. I am way too drunk to be texting right now. Where are those glasses? Just judging other people. So now I try not to do it. That's the thing that mushrooms really help. They help me like learn that I'm the same as everybody else. I'm no better and I see myself as them. I saw somebody the other day, they were in the car, they were picking their nose in the car. But this guy was going for it. Like he was working in there, like a, like, a, like a Mexican trying to get into Arizona. <laughs> Just fucking working swiftly and deeply for freedom. And he caught me looking and he got all embarrassed and he tried to take his hand away. But for the first time in my life, I realized like, you know what? It's cool, I do it too sometimes. So I just put my finger up my nostril and I just go, yeah man, thumbs up. I do it too. Live your life. I don't know why, I, there's a couple places I like to do it. I like to do it there and I like to do it, I don't know why, I do it on elevators. I pick it and then I wipe it onto the wall. I'm not proud, it's just what I do. Like right next to the buttons, not on the buttons. Not on the buttons, I'm not trying to ruin anyone's day. Just right next to the buttons. I want it to look like a slug from another dimension. Transported in, crawled halfway down, and then made every assumption he wanted to about Earth based on that elevator. And then transported the fuck back off. I don't do it, by the way, when anybody else is on the elevator. I'm not like, what are you nerds gonna do about it? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Fucking bitches. <laughs> Punk ass bitches. Yeah, I do it there and I do it in the car. I don't know if you guys did too, it feels comfortable there. I know you're, it's all glass all around you, but since it's a tight space, it just feels like you're alone. So not all the time, but sometimes I'll pick it. And then I'll pick and then I'll roll it into a ball. And then I'll pick more with the other hand. And I'll add it to the first ball. And I'll just continue doing that until I've built up enough mass in the ball that I can roll down the window and throw it at Mercedes Benz's. Yeah. And that's how I get revenge for the Holocaust. <laughs> yeah, one witch at a time. I just say, fuck you, Hitler, and I fucking do it. People are like, what are you even talking about? You know what you did to my people. Okay, okay, I have a question right now. You with the BDLA shirt. Yeah. Um, I want you to check the score of the game. <laughs> Can you do that? But only him right now. The Lakers are playing Denver right now. 41, Four, what is it? 41, oh, that's close. Wait, Lakers? Fuck. I hate the Lakers so goddamn much. I hate the Lakers so goddamn much. 
I know I come from LA, but fuck the Lakers. They ruin comedy shows every goddamn time they're in the playoffs. All the bandwagon fans stay at home and watch, and nobody comes out to shows. Fuck the Lakers. I hate them so much. And that rapist, Kobe Bryant. He's the fucking team captain. He's a no. Oh, that was Denver. He raped that chick in Denver. You guys should give her season tickets. And every time the Lakers play in town, just seat her right behind the opposing bench. Just have her wear a t-shirt that says, I still remember. You should. Fuck that guy. He totally raped that chick. All my friends are like, dude, his turnaround jumper is sweet, so don't bring it up. I will bring it up. I will. I hate the Lakers. All my friends tried to defend him, too. They're like, dude, he didn't rape that chick in Denver. All he did was he put it in her butt when she didn't want it in her butt. Uh, I guess that leads me to another question then. Um, what do you consider rape? How do you define it? Because if Kobe Bryant put it in my butt, after I specifically told him, I do not want that in my butt. If I was very clear that there's no questions, I made him put the Xbox on pause. I was like, Kobe, listen, you see that thing? You see that? I don't want, forget why it's even out. Let's not even talk about that right now. I don't want that in my butt, okay? I do not want it in or around my butt. Don't even get it close. I don't want it anywhere near my butt. Now say it back to me so I know we're on the same page. And if he said it back to me, we were very clear, and then I turned to walk away, and he still put it in my butt, rape would be the exact charge that I'd be too embarrassed to report to the police. <laughs> if you're a Laker fan, I hope you get divorced and your children develop Down syndrome. <laughs> yeah, that's how much I hate Not they're born with that, I hope they're born normal and then develop it so they remember what it was like. Check into the score in 20 minutes, okay? <laughs> I love how you wore a beat LA shirt to my show. That's fucking rad. Even though it's a Celtics shirt, I don't care. Fuck LA. I fuck the Lakers. People are like, can I just get into the, not have the Down syndrome part? Can I just have the divorce part? Because I was about to do that anyway. No, no. <laughs> Here's what I've been doing in my dating life recently. I don't know why, but I started dating like really young women. I'm 38. I date anywhere from like 25 to like, 20. It's where it's a little bit creepy, but here's a rule. There's a rule that's like half your age plus seven. But there's another rule, which is fuck it. So I like that rule better. It's just like, who cares? Girls are fun to be around. I like that. I don't like people my own age. I like that age better. They're, fu they're still full of life and hope. You know, at 22, you go to a job interview and you expect to get it. They haven't been beaten down by the realities of existence yet. It's ready to go. At 24 years old, you wake up, you're like, what does the world have to offer Melissa? Once you hit 30, it becomes like uh, pain and suffering. That's all it ever has to offer. <laughs> I just like being around it. Like, I could be a doctor or a lawyer or even the president. And you're like, okay, dummy. Okay. And that's the other thing. My friends are like, don't you find those girls stupid when they're young? Don't you find them dumb? I'm like, no, a lot of them are in college. They're reading great works of literature all the time. But a lot of them are not in college and they're retarded. Especially, especially if you're hot. If you're like a hot 22 year old to a college educated 37 year old man, you're like a smart dog. Like, don't get me wrong, you do awesome tricks. I love your tricks. But we're never gonna play chess. And that's okay, that's fine. Have you ever had someone say something to you that's so stupid that you can't even quite be sure that, that they even said that? Where you're like, nobody's that dumb. I must have misunderstood you. I was on a date in Los Angeles. You guys know where the Walk of Fame is? And Hollywood stars are on the ground. This is what she actually said to me. She goes, 
I love coming here because I love walking over the graves of the fallen <laughs> celebrities. It's like, wait, what do you think is happening right now? What do you think is going on? You need to repeat yourself. Because if you said what I thought you said, then you know what? I love you. And let's just make this official right now. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Or at least until you turn 26. And then you can hit the road, hag. And she said it again. But the problem was she said it so confidently that a part of me was like, like am I wrong? Are these graves, really? When did Alf die? That's not even a person. No, no, I'm right, I'm right, I'm totally right. And I told her she was wrong, and this is what she said. She goes, oh, guess I was wrong, and it was over. That's refreshing as fuck. Fight for six months for no reason. And the best thing about girls, like young women like that, at 22, 24, is this. Your vagina, at that age, is perfect. Everything is still, like, like inside and stuff, you know? It's still, the parachute is still packed. <laughs> they just look like they're supposed to in the book. You should enjoy that while you can, because at some point, it won't look like that anymore. At some point, it looks like it took a hand grenade and just said, fuck it. Just pull the pin. And swallowed it, and let it sink to the bottom of your stomach. And then it just goes, tick, 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 tick. <laughs> just blows everything out, just <laughs> Into this weird vag cleavage situation. It looks like Inspector Gadget's hat. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'll still take it. I'll still accept that in a vagina. That's just not what I was shopping for, that's all I'm saying. I'm never gonna be like, send it back to the chef. You know, it's just not what I was, it's like my dream car, it's a Maserati. But I'll drive a Honda Civic. It's functional. And it's not like I'm any better at all, by the way. At 38, my balls, they've become so fucking droopy and like wrinkled that at this point, when I'm naked, it looks like I always just sat in gum. It's just this weird, like I go over, I'm like, oh, motherfucker, and then Is that bazooka? No, no. No, I wish it was. No, it's not. Those are my testicles. They'll be like that forever now. Yours are like that too now, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. At some age, they all, your wife was like, Did they, were they always that way? And you're like, no, they weren't. Just one day you're doing a doggy style, and she's like, are you choking me? And you're like, choking you? <laughs> no, what are you talking? Oh, the balls just swinging around. <laughs> fucking grabbing onto your neck. It's like an extra hand. It's a new fucking weapon in your arsenal. <laughs> my body is failing me. <laughs> it really is. I shit my pants in Australia last year. Yeah, that's not the joke. That's not any part of the joke. That's just, that's the informational part that comes at the beginning. It wasn't when I was a baby, by the way. I wasn't like three. I was a year younger than I am right now. I look just like this but I had caca in my underpants. I was in Sydney, Australia. I was in this giant bridge. They had to, called the Sydney Harbor Bridge. It's this giant bridge. It looks like the Brooklyn Bridge. It has those pylons that go up like this, you know, like really high, but it's like way bigger. And this is a hike where you can walk on top of those things, those steel cables. And it's like this three hour long hike. And I was like 30 minutes into it when I got my first diarrhea pang. I'm like, this is going to be a problem. Because I don't know what you guys do when you get diarrhea, but what I do is I do the diarrhea math. And I figure out where am I on the scale of one to 10. And that'll tell me how badly I need to take action right now. 
because you have to know right now because that really gives you no warning whatsoever. It doesn't come on slowly. It comes on at full strength right away. It's not like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. Ooh. No, diarrhea is for real. The diarrhea, like la di da, not a care in the world. Everything's really sunny. Oh fuck! Diarrhea is here. It's here. So you gotta one to ten it immediately. You gotta know. With one, one is like nothing. A one is like when this comes out tomorrow. It's gonna be a bit moist. And that's a one. That's technically, I guess, it's diarrhea. And a ten is like, where the fuck is the bathroom? And I was like an eight point seven. Like I was pretty far up there. And uh, so I go to the tour guide, I'm like, how much longer till we get to the top? And he goes, mm, like another hour, hour and 10 minutes. <sighs> All right, uh, let's see what I'm made of as a man. You know, this is my moment to test myself. Heroes aren't asked to be called upon. They're just called. So I just sucked it up as hard as I could. I just started like duck walking <laughs> up this giant bridge. And Sydney, Australia, just go like, oh, oh my God, hold it, hold it in. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. It hurts so bad. It hurts so fucking bad. Whatever it feels like to give birth, this was the opposite of that. Just 100% pure sucking. It's like a doctor was standing over me, telling me, like, Paul. I can see the head! Oh! And I'm fucking trying to do it. There's a Scottish guy in line, like right behind me. And he goes, pick up the pace, please. And I'm like, shut your fucking mouth, Scotland! I'm working on something right now. Oh my god. Every once in a while, I would just get too much. Like, I couldn't control it. And I have to do the cross leg thing. You know, where you just cross your legs over as far as you can. Do like the reverse splits almost. And then you just stand there holding it. I've seen people like this at a supermarket before, by the way. I have. I once saw a lady in this peanut butter aisle, just like frozen Mr. Universe smile on her face. Convulsing rapidly. Just like that. She wasn't looking at peanut butter, by the way. She didn't give a fuck about peanut butter. She was just trying not to shit herself in front of her neighbors. And so she was like, mm, we're good, and she was right back. And that's what I was on this bridge. She was like, hold it, oh my God, hold it. I was sweating so much. I was sweating hard, but not in the forehead. I wasn't sweating on the forehead. The forehead, that's a sweat of heat or exertion. I'm sweating under the eye. The sweat of mistakes and regret. <laughs> but I'm doing it though, I'm telling you, I'm in control of the game for like 54 minutes until the end of this hike, and I have no idea why, but there's this ladder that just goes straight up for like 12 to 15 steps. And I'm staring at this ladder and I'm like, I don't know how I'm supposed to get up here. Because I don't know if you guys can squeeze your butt cheeks together as hard as you've ever done that ever before in your life. And try to bend your knee at the same time. But like you can't, like you can't do it. You can't do both at the same time. It's like sneezing with your eyes open. I have no idea why bending the knee like this, that's a release valve. I have no idea why the knee is connected to the asshole. If you ask me, that's a design flaw. Should be corrected in later models. But for some reason, you bend that knee, that just opens up the floodgates. So I'm staring at this ladder, I'm like, what am I supposed to do here? <laughs> Without my knees, the Scottish guy taps me on the shoulder, and I'm like, what? He's like, the ladder's clear. And I'm like, I know, the ladder's clear, Braveheart, shut up. 
God, you're annoying. The, the Scottish people are annoying people. I get what the English hate you now. I get it. So I'm like, all right, what am I supposed to do here? Why did they put a bridge on the goddamn ladder beyond me, by the way? Maybe they didn't expect people with diarrhea to come by. In fairness to them. So I was like, all right, here's what I'll do. I'll think outside the box. I'll just reach up as high as I can. And I'll grab onto one of the rungs of the ladder. And I'll just do pull-ups. I'll just step by step. I'll just pull my dead body up this ladder. And it was dead because I'm squeezing so hard from the middle. Like from here down, it's just dangling away. Like Joe Theismann's leg. Just hanging there. So I do like three pull-ups and then I realized, oh, I'm very weak. I don't know what made me think I'd do 12 straight pull-ups. My record was like nine and that was, in, that was in college. Like there's literally no chance I have of doing that. And I get to like four and then I start doing the shakes. And I brought it to about the nose and I was like, going the wrong way. And then I like lost it. And as I let go, my right leg, it caught on one of the rungs of the ladder, yeah. And you just went like that, and as it, as it bent, you just, you just hear this sound. This horrible, horrible sound. Just bent, you just hear this. touch your butt, you still are holding out hope. You know, that's what we do as humans, we hold out hope. And you're just like, please, maybe, maybe that one-tenth of one percent chance that it was just a wet fart. Please let it just be a streaker. And you reach back there and you feel a chunk. Not chunks, anything but chunks. Uh, and I just stood there for what seemed like forever, like two full minutes, just feeling bad for myself. Like, what is wrong with you, Ari? What is wrong? You're a grown man. You're an American representing your country in a foreign land. And your underwear is full of wet kangaroo meat. Because you had to get adventurous at dinner last night. And I just stood there feeling bad for myself for like two full minutes until I remembered, oh yeah, that Scottish guy is still right behind me. <laughs> and I'm up three steps, so he's pretty much ass to face right now. So like right in front of him, he just saw the, 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 the Morse code situation <laughs> that was laying out in front of his face in my pants, was pushing long and shorts. And he just heard the sound. He just heard the which is an unmistakable sound. Nobody ever hears that sound and goes, ah, ice cream truck. Like that's never happened. So I turned around to see if he had seen, right? And this was his face. He was going like this. Just staring up like whatever was on his mind was just wiped off completely. It was just etch a sketch right off. Like he was like, maybe later I'll go to the zoo and then I His hands were like out like a boxer who just got knocked out but hadn't fallen yet. And we're just staring at each other. Like there's a nonverbal tug of war going on. Nobody wants to be the first one to talk. With his mind, he was like, how do you want to play this? And with my mind, I was like, no, 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 no. It's your move now. I just laid my cards on the table. 
So this is what he did, and it was so fucking kind. He looks at me, and he just goes, did you just shit your pants? <laughs> that wasn't a nice part, by the way. That was just a weird, honest question. And by the way, if the roles were reversed, there's no way in the world I'm gonna bring that up. If I'm the guy who heard it, then you can never in a million years. He'll turn around and be like, oh, crazy weather we're having. Um, and uh, politics, uh, sports and so forth. It's nuts this time of year. I'm never gonna deal with that. He just went right for it. Did you just shit your pants? And I wanted to lie. Obviously, I'm not going like, the truth on this one, right? Truth? No. I thought I was thinking like, just tell him like a pelican died. Or maybe this is what I actually thought I was saying. I thought maybe saying like, yeah, Americans always shit on bridges. It's, it's good luck. But like, he wasn't gonna believe anything. So eventually, I just, I just, I just said like, yes, I shit my pants. And this is the part that I'll never forget. It was so fucking nice. He reached into his pocket and he pulled out a handkerchief. Yeah, it was an embroidered handkerchief. I don't remember the guy's name. I wish I remembered his name. All I remember was the initials. We're on the handkerchief. It was E-L-M. And he just goes, I've been there, man. <laughs> he gave me this handkerchief. It was so nice. It was so kind. On a human level, that was the nice thing anyone's ever... I was like getting choked up almost. I was like, dude, after I made fun of you for like an hour straight about being Scottish, I was like getting, I was like tears were welling in my eyes as I reached in there and just started scooping. Just scooping these chunks, these Twix travel size chunks of, of diarrhea. And then I released it into the wind and it sailed away like that feather at the end of Forrest Gump. You guys, I'm done. Thank you very much, everybody. You guys were an absolutely, absolutely awesome crowd. I cannot do this without you. So thank you very much for coming. With crowds like this, I would do this for free. Have a good night. Once I say hi afterwards, I'll be out here. Come say hi, take a picture. Good night, everybody.